Please subscribe to Ayo Daily Matthew TV channel. The danger of dishonoring a genuine man of God. And how a whole community learned this bitter lesson from Apostle Ayo Babalola. If you don't know how to honor a man of God, please do not join those who dishonor him. The same anointing that blesses men can also destroy men. Honoring a prophet has a reward and dishonoring a prophet carries heavy punishment. Many towns and communities are paying for what their forefathers did to the prophet that God sent to them in the past. If you ever see a man that God honors, never dishonor such a man. Offer, learn this bitter lesson when they dishonored Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola. According to Moses Oludele Ito, a Pentecostal historian, Offa, Guara State was one of the major towns that Ayo Babalola visited during his early ministerial life. His revival in the town and miracle healing involving especially the lepers got so much sensation that the Muslims of the town, out of envy, moved their traditional ruler to tell Ayo Babalola to leave. And when it would lead to controversy, the man of God packed his things and left without pronouncing a blessing on the town. The consequence of our people paid daily for that effrontery. From the day that he left Offa, rain never fell on the town again, nor on the farms owned by any native of the town. When it rained, it would only fall on the surrounding towns like Erni Ile, Igosu, Ijagbo, and on their farms, but not in Offa or on their farms. This forced the Olofa to raise a party to look for Joseph Babalola and beg him to come back to the town. It was when he came back and held a revival in the town and prayed with Olofa and his chiefs present that the heavens was opened. Like Elijah who told Ahab to hurry on his chariot so that the rain would not stop him, Babalola too told Olofa to quickly hurry to get to his palace immediately so that the rains would not stop him. True to his predictions, the rain came powerfully according to the saying of the man of God. Unbridled tongue against men of God in our generation. The scripture described the tongue as the smallest but most poisonous part of the human body. It can wreck a great destiny. Many Christians are sick today because of the misuse of their tongue, especially against anointed men of God. The scripture is full of many instances where people became sick and blind as a result of speaking against anointed men of God. We seem to have forgotten the scripture that admonishes us not to touch his prophets and do them no harm. Many genuine prophets of God have been slandered and mocked by both members and outsiders. We seem to have forgotten that the anointing that makes men can also destroy men. When you speak against a genuine man of God, you might be digging your own grave unknowingly. Aaron and Miriam were called into the prophetic ministry but became jealous of their master Moses. 
they felt they could speak against him anyhow. But God rebuked Miriam with leprosy. Why many Christians are suffering from terminal sicknesses today? Moses was not there when both Aaron and Miriam challenged him wrongly. Numbers chapter 12 verse 2 says, And God heard them, The man of God that you are backbiting might not hear you, but his God is always listening to you. Many Christians and anointed men of God are sick today because they cannot control their tongues against another anointed man of God. Sometimes that sickness is not from the devil. It is actually a result of touching an anointed man of God with your unbridled tongue. In today's world, there are many popular and trending radio, television, and social media programs that are specifically done to punish men of God. When you listen to such programs or participate in any capacity, you are not just mocking a man of God, you are also mocking his God. Some of us have forgotten that the God of the Bible is still our God and the God of the prophet of old is the God of the prophet of this age. God hasn't changed and his ways and acts of judgment have not changed. The fire that is burning some people's health is kindled by their unbridled tongue against men of God. Miriam and Aaron condemned Moses based on his perceived error. They became judges against men of God, against the scripture that said, Thou shalt not judge. What you considered as an error from a man of God could be a special dealing from God to him. And since you're not there when God commanded him to do that which is beyond your theological orientation, you must learn to bridle your tongue when you don't understand God's dealing with another man of God. God doesn't lead men the same way and he doesn't need your permission to do his things in his own ways. When you don't understand, learn to keep your mouth shut. Once upon a time, there lived a deliverance minister. His friend met him and asked him about his ministry. He responded by saying that he has stopped laying hands on people. He has stopped organizing deliverance service for people. His friend was curious and asked, why would you jettison your calling? Why would you stop doing what God called you to be doing? The evangelist responded as follows. I have discovered that most of the people that I want to lay hands on and deliver are under God's judgment. How can I set a man that is bound by God free? Like Miriam, many people have lost favor with God because they cannot keep their mouth shut. When they cannot understand God's dealing with other men of God. Many are sick today because they condemned men of God and sometimes you will not be healed until that very man of God that you condemned prays for you. Until Moses prayed for Miriam, she remained leprous. Until Job prayed for his friends that mocked him during his trial, they remained under God's judgment. Some of you watching this video actually need to go and reconcile with your former pastors and ask them to pray for you to make progress in life. Mocking fallen soldier of Christ can be disastrous. Men of God are still men. The best of man 
is still man. Every man at his best state is vanity. Anointing is what makes the difference. A righteous man do sometimes fall. Men of God are not God. It is only the grace of God that brings perfection. Do not mock a fallen soldier of Christ. You can lose all that belong to you. Your children can lose their glorious destiny. If you cannot help a fallen soldier of Christ, do not add salt to his injuries. Do not join to mark a man of God during his weak or fallen days. Do not join the crusade to silent men of God because of their perceived or real errors. Ham and Canaan learned this lesson the hard way when Noah drank himself to stupor after the flood. God overlooked Noah's perceived error but allowed the causes that he put on Canaan to stand forever. David saw King Saul in his fallen state, yet he knew that once anointed, a man of God still enjoyed certain privilege. He refrained himself from hurting a fallen man of God, even though God had departed from Saul. David still called him the anointed. Mocking a fallen anointed man of God could be a trap that can ruin your destiny completely. Don't criticize God's people, especially the ministers of God. I said, leave them alone. For the Bible says, whatever they do, they do unto the Lord. Are you hearing me? You are not the one to accuse another man's servant. To his master, he stands or falls. And he says, yea, God is able to make him stand. And I tell you, I said, don't join anybody to criticize other ministers. Don't do it. Don't do it. I said the same thing to family members. I said, don't criticize any minister. Leave them alone. Because there are curses against those who do. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Ayo Daily Matthew TV channel.